Strafe. <laughs> Oh, no, wait, that's not the one people have been bugging me about. Hold on, right, uh... Stonks! <laughs> Cruelty Squad was way better at establishing a CEO mindset. This just sucks. How am I supposed to make a video on this? I mean, it is trash, it's Cash just... Cash reserves dangerously low. Not very interesting. Oh, now I remember it was Stride, which is a VR parkour adventure. Ow! Ah! Stop blueballing the audience, Civvy. Fine, God! The algorithm requires engagement. Uh, okay. Strife is a 1996 first-person shooter from Rogue Entertainment. Rogue would go on to work with id Software on other things, Quake and Quake 2 expansions, and then later on American McGee's Alice. And in a strange turn of events, the company was shut down while they were working on Counter-Strike Condition Zero for Valve, and their producer for that game left to work for Sony. Which was a dumb thing in retrospect, right? And a group from the defunct company went on to create Nerve Software, who you might know as the people who assisted in development on all of these games, as well as the modern ports and expansions for all its software games, most notably No Rest for the Living, and the cursed Randy version of Duke 3D. Mm. 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 Where is it? Yeah, let's not talk about that. I don't think it's representative of Nerve's abilities as a developer. Strife is an incredibly ambitious game, fusing RPG elements into a Doom Engine game in 1996, long before people had done that in a way where it didn't play like System Shock. And I'm really excited to be able to bring some backstory to this video, right? Because John Romero wrote a bit about Strife's development in his new book, Doom Guy Life in First Person. There's not a lot out there about Strife, since it's a somewhat fondly remembered Doom Engine game that came out the same year as Quake, and was the last commercially released game on the old Doom Engine until people started using GZ Doom to make games. Looking at you, Sulaco. Beyond Sunset, Supplice, Head On, Hellslinger, Relentless Frontier, Divine Frequency, Brutal Fate, Project Absentia, Shrine, Age of Hell, and Hands of Necromancy. So for about 20 years, Strife was the last officially released Doom Engine game. From John Romero's book, I can gather that Strife was in development by Cygnus Studios. Wait, what the fuck? So the owner of Cygnus Studios, Scott Host, admired the work ethic of mostly organic time shifter and fearless black wall traveler John Carmack, who at the time always worked. And in the book, Romero provides a different account of the time tracking software that had been written about in Masters of Doom, where in that book it was used on Romero by Carmack. This book says it was made and deployed against Cygnus employees to try and get strife out faster. The employees approached Romero threatening to quit because of the merciless crunch, leading to the game being cancelled at Cygnus and having the employees who were working on it found another company, which would be Rogue, though their original idea for a name was Mutiny Software. I think this is an incredibly interesting backstory to a game that is about overthrowing an oppressive force that controls human society. Also, it may be the last time anyone got shit-canned for demanding crunch. Work continued on Strife with a new programmer and some managerial help from Sandy Peterson. This didn't mean the game was going to do particularly well. It was released in May of 1996, about a month before Quake, and about four months after Duke Nukem 3D. Duke 3D was a little more impressive on a tactical level with its environmental interaction and 3D-ish elements. Strife wasn't a huge hit, is what I'm saying. But Rogue pulled through, and then, in December of 2014, a fairly unknown company contracted two gentlemen from the Doom community who'd been working to reverse-engineer Strife's code into the source port Chocolate Strife. Probably the biggest reason any of us can play Strife without DOSBox. These two gentlemen are now full-time employees of that company, Night Dive Studios. Strife Veteran Edition was the first Night Dive port, and... Maybe it shows a little. There's a weird configuration menu that launches the game proper when you start it up instead of it being, you know, in the options. Which it is, it's just like, man, I don't know. But this all seems like pretty important history for a nearly forgotten FPS RPG hybrid from almost three decades ago. There are a lot of fancy graphical improvements in Strife Veteran Edition. I'm not using any of them. They look like this. I kind of like the shadows, but they look... I don't know, something feels off about him. Now with all that out of the way, and my excitement to get to reference Romero's book finally, it's time to once more dive into my least played Doom Engine game. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even play this one until the 2000s. I didn't even know it existed. So here's...
The game looks better than that, I promise. The comet struck our planet without warning. We lost our paradise in a single violent stroke. The impact released a virus which swept through the land and killed millions. They turned out to be the lucky ones. I've got some questions, but I'm going to be polite and save them until the end of the PowerPoint. For those that did not die became mutations of humanity. Some became fanatics who heard the voice of a malignant god in their heads and called themselves the Order. Those of us who were deaf to this voice suffer horribly and are forced to serve these ruthless psychotics who wield weapons more powerful than anything we can muster. They destroy our women and children so that we must hide them underground and live like animals in constant fear for our lives. But there are whispers of discontent. If we organize, can we defeat our masters? Weapons are being stolen. Soldiers are being trained. A movement is born. Born of lifelong strife. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> I have some questions that didn't first occur to me until this playthrough, and watching the intro right now. So if you look at this scene where the planet gets hit with the comet, which I'm gonna gloss over until I can get Neil deGrasse Tyson to do a guest appearance on this show. Oh my god, kids, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson in the house! I'm doing my part. Jesus Christ, Katie, really? Okay, but I'm watching this intro, and I see as the comet hits, and these people, they're not living in modern times, right? They've got American-ass accents all over the place, with very few outrageous exceptions. Shh, keep it quiet, unless you want us both killed. So we're looking at some kind of medieval society that exists after these kinds of accents, which leads me to believe that there was some kind of catastrophic event before the comet, meaning that Strife is a post-post-apocalyptic story. This screen here tells us that we're a wandering mercenary searching for the Front, the Resistance movement, movement that's fighting the Order. But then you get rounded up by some Order acolytes. Now, I'm gonna point out that I don't hate Strife. I'm just forced to show you one of the worst parts of the game up front. Yeah, there's two of these guys here, and it takes nine or ten hits with your knife to kill them. The knife gets upgraded to do more damage later, and is your only option for stealth kills at the moment. Yeah, the game has a stealth system, in that enemies can't hear two weapons in the whole game. So it's not really important. Right out of the gate, you'll have to talk to this guy here. In a small world, word travels fast. I hear you just removed some obstacles from your path. Of course you heard it, I stabbed three guys to death ten feet from here. Are you interested in some more lucrative projects? Yeah, of course. First time I played this game, I had no idea what to expect. An RPG FPS thing? I mean, I didn't play a lot of RPGs, I still don't. I'm an instant gratification kind of gamer, so conversing with someone to get a quest was not something I expected out of a Doom Engine game. Some, uh, friends of mine need someone silenced. Belden is being held by the Order in their sanctuary. Yeah, sure, I'll kill a guy. I've been in town for five minutes and killed three people already. That's a problem with authoritarian dictatorships like this. The punishment for one murder is the same as four murders is the same as looking at the governor funny. It's just death. You might be wondering why this guy sounds funny. It's because the voice actor's doing a Humphrey Bogart impression. And we're living at a time where young people don't know who that is and AI isn't good enough for Marvel to put him into the Avengers yet. Humphrey Bogart was an actor in old Hollywood who was five foot eight, looked like this, and pulled this girl when he was in his mid-forties. In the mid-forties. Follow your dreams, kids, but also probably don't smoke cigarettes. Anyway. And he's gonna pay me to kill a guy. He even gives me a weapon to do it, even if this electric crossbow is objectively the shittiest weapon in the game and I think is the worst starting weapon in any Doom Engine game. It's not even hit scan. This game is so ambitious with its RPG mechanics that you can actually find a side quest to do in the village here. If you go into the bar, talk to the bartender. What's a good word, barkeep? The word is the sewers hold more than just rats and robots. Sewers, rats, and robots is actually the title of my upcoming autobiography. Head upstairs to talk to this guy. I'm kind of a talent broker for the rebels. A guy who is as good as you can make a lot of gold. If you're hooked up with the right people. I guess my reputation precedes me. The Order's sanctuary by the river is their unofficial torture chamber. Hidden inside, there's a golden chalice. 
You swipe it and reap your reward. All right, good to know. I'm on my way there to do some murder anyway. This post-post-apocalyptic New Yorker seems trustworthy. I go into the sanctuary, your typical small, easy first area, where the game teaches you that its stealth mechanics are mostly bullshit. Because this little gateway here is an alarm sensor, and you have to go through it. The game is teaching you how alarms work, and they're not as annoying sounding as they could be. Kill acolytes, find the guy, kill the guy, done. Grab the chalice, done. Let's get the reward. As I walk into the bar, everybody freaks out. Turrets start shooting me, what's the deal? Hey, I know, kinda looks like a setup. I would never do that to, to such a great killing machine. Got the item? Great. Now get ready. Gold and glory, just like I promised. Take this key, and the governor will reward you. You have any guns or anything? Everyone seems to be trying to kill me. Get lost, kid. You're bothering me. Now, if you couldn't already tell, Harris has betrayed you. And I think most people who played this game for the first time fell for it, because imagine you're playing an FPS game in 1996, and it just dumps on you first thing. Well, funny thing, and a thing I only found out in this playthrough, if you talk to the guy that you're supposed to kill, he tells you that Harris fucked him over and that's how he got captured. This game on the Doom engine in 1996 expected people to talk to an NPC they were sent to kill. Nonsense. Madness. I guess I need to talk to the governor about it. <laughs> So, you're the fool who stole the chalice. I'm going to have you arrested as a rebel thief, thereby enhancing my position with the Order. How does it feel to be an unwitting pawn? It feels bad, man. I'm not happy about it. If you steal that chalice, you need to start the game over again or deal with endless acolytes teleporting in to kill you in one of the major hub areas of the game. So let's start again, talk to Bogey, kill the guy, grab his ring, and bring it back. The traitor you killed was about to reveal the location of the front. You saved lives. How would you like to earn more gold than a future free from tyranny? Gold, you said? Than a future free from tyranny. Yeah, I guess. Is it tyranny against other people, or does that include me? I guess it'll eventually include me, so yeah, let's not do it. I have a business relationship with the front's leader, Maisel. I know he needs an incisive fellow like yourself, and he pays well. Take this recovered comm unit and you'll be led to, shall we say, opportunities? Listen, if this comm unit is working, that means you're still 100% human. I've been ordered to bring you in. We're talking trust here. Betray me and pay. How would I pay you when you get a pop filter? Oh, and by the way, you can call me Blackbird. Blackbird leads me into the front secret base so I can talk to Maisel, this intense looking gentleman. Welcome to the last flicker of hope. Only we have the free will to oppose the order. We have the sharpest scientific minds and many able bodies, but we lack that one real, uh, problem solver who will give us the edge we need. Help us. Oh, yeah, I get it. You need a guy who can do almost everything by himself to free humanity. I'm a chosen one, man. I'm good with that. Hold on, wait a second. I distinctly remember being able to turn down Maisel's offer. And it's really funny, look. You might want to reconsider, seeing that you're surrounded by heavily armed angry rebels. No, that's okay. Then die in shame and dishonor. <laughs> Why would Night Dive remove this? And they took out being able to refuse the first quest and getting punished for it too. If you keep the beginner's trap from Harris, why would you take this out? It's way funnier. Our last raid was a disaster and most of our troops were captured. I need you to free these prisoners. Take this money and visit Irali who supplies our weapons. Then this key will get you in to see the governor. He's a corrupt puppet of the order, but he loves to make deals. Oh yeah, I know all about the governor. Fight for the front and freedom. Move out. Off I go to start putting together the revolution against the Order. What the hell do you want? A prison pass. Let's deal. He wants me to go into town somewhere and cut off someone's power supply, and then he'll give me a prison pass. We need to speak to someone who knows the old town nope. and where this coupling is. Command says find MacGuffin. He's in what is politely called the bumhole. MacGuffin? In the bumhole? Fuck you, game. You seek wisdom, my son. The order is seen to it that we ask only one question. Why? 
You know what? I'm just gonna find it myself. Oh, you idiot! You've shut off the power to the jamming circuits we used to conceal our base from the Order. Ugh, fine. Good move. The Governor is a lousy liar. That's our power coupling. Now let's get that path. This is where the real fun begins. No one gets through here without authorization from the Warden or the Governor. Okay, but talk only to the Warden. What a grouch. I hope we get to kill him later. We do get to kill him later, but could you not say... I hope we get to kill him later. So seductively? Breaking into the prison because I don't have people skills. I don't care if Morel gave you a pass. This is my prison. My key is the only way in or out, and I'm not taking any chances. This dude couldn't be any more Nazi-coded if he was goose-stepping out of a panzer. We should just kill him. So now the alarm is going off. Not that it matters, since this prison is also guarded by robots who will attack you regardless of whether or not you've stayed incognito the whole time. You may notice I have an assault rifle now, which isn't quite as straightforward as the kind you'd get in Doom. You need to fire it in short bursts or else the accuracy, at least for the moment, is trash. The spider robots also happen to be one of the two enemies in this game that I instinctively fear and hate. They like to crawl on ceilings and drop down before hitting you with rapid melee attacks and sometimes they'll get you stuck because enemies that drop down from the ceiling are really weird additions to a game that runs on an engine that doesn't actually do the concept of height. To free prisoners, I need to talk to the judge. Kill me and you'll never set anyone free. The cells are opened with a handprint scanner. Alright, trying to kill spider robots while freeing the prisoners, and there is luckily a teleport directly back, which is very convenient and also seems like a terrible risk. I won't complain because I don't have to walk through the whole world again to get back to Maisel. The prisoners have been welcomed back, thanks to you. Here's some gold. Go visit the medic and the weapons trainer, and then I have higher goals for you. Ah yes, the medic and the weapons trainer. Two people I didn't ever visit when I first played this game who were absolutely necessary to your survival. These guys are the most important members of the front. The medic gives you stamina upgrades which will add 10% to your max health. And, though the game doesn't fucking tell you this, it also increases your knife damage. I can't find that part anywhere, even in the manual, but this is an upgrade you can get many times during the game from this guy. Same with the weapons trainer, who will give you a 10% accuracy boost each time you train with him. It makes a difference. Look at my assault rifle at the beginning of the game, and look at my assault rifle at the end of the game. Maisel is sending me off to destroy a power generator that controls the shields for the Order. But first, I have to talk to Werner in the warehouse, who gives me an ID card from an employee who died. This, for some reason, works. It's just dumb enough to work. No! It's just dumb! I have to visit the reactor area first through the secret entrance if I want to find this technician who engages in some polite conversation before... <laughs> I take his gold key so I can raid the armory in the warehouse, which gives me a ton of ammo for my mini-missile launcher. Which is like a missile launcher, but much less satisfying and horribly inaccurate. This is when I decide to turn the crosshair on, a new addition from the remaster unless you count the item you pick up that fills your screen with this garbage, which I don't. The stealth thing was fine in the warehouse, but I have to alert enemies here whether they be unfriendly robots that shoot me anyway or guards who hear the alarm that I have to set off if I want to progress. The people in the reactor itself aren't alerted, so that's nice. Work, sleep, and get tortured. What a life. You said it, brother. I have to put on this hazardous environment suit to be around the power crystal before blowing it up. This thing only lasts like a minute, but you know it's run out because the screen flashes green in this really annoying way before you start to take damage. But it's fine, we're okay, crystal's blown up. What's next? The Order thinks it is secure in its castle. Wrong. If you open the gates, they'd be easy pickings. I like the sound of that. I sure hope we're not about to wander into the thing that people have been telling me to play this game for because of memes. And for that, we have to go down into the sewers. <sighs> Hold your nose. We're going down. Look, I've played Strife, and I already know this is the worst fucking section, so here's what we're gonna do. Because you have to wear these protective suits in the sewer because the water is so toxic that it will kill you, every time we see the screen flashing green from that, we'll add one to the count. Sound good? We're looking for Waran, who calls himself the Rat King. I'm sure it's descriptive as well as colorful. Cool, I already hate him. 
This is a pretty bad sewer. It's not a Note City bad or Redneck Rampage bad, but it's almost trying to make up for that with the constant toxicity. Yeah, it gives you plenty of environment suits, but you still have to put them on manually, and it's not like you have a timer to know when they're running low. It's an extra annoyance that really doesn't need to exist, but here we are. I grab a grenade launcher here too, but more on that later, because the cramped shitholes are the worst place to attempt to use it. Yes, this is a shitty maze of corridors that's difficult to navigate, and you won't even know what you're looking for until- FUCK! And you won't even know what you're looking for until- Oh, come on, I'm not even in the sewage right now! And you won't even know what you're looking for until you find yourself in the Rat King's den. Ah, a surfacer in need of a favor. Down here you do a favor to get a favor. And I need the town entrance that is our path to food opened. The order has it sealed and guarded. Okay, fine. You might be wondering why this guy sounds funny. It's because the voice actor is doing a Peter Lorre impression, and we're living in a time where young people don't know who that is, and AI isn't good enough for Marvel to put him into the Avengers yet. I'm pretty sure he's that fucking hack who produced Big Bang Theory, so fuck him. So I go through the sewer again to find another exit. <laughs> And I go up the elevator and, oh, fucking goddammit! Kill one guy, grab his uniform, and return to the Rat King. Hey, have you brought me what I want? What are you gonna use that uniform for? Good. Here's something extra. My fellows tore this off of a fallen crusader. It's the parts that make up a flamethrower. Now Irali can make one for you. You can have such fun. Oh, that does sound fun. You have to enter another part of the sewers. <laughs> I have to go back to the surface, drain a reclamation tank, and jump in there. And then... Don't ask me where we are, I'm lost too. It's like they knew! Command, he's done it. The gates are open. Send in the shock troops and tell Mesa we're coming in. Oh yeah, we're coming in. Oh, hold on. I notice you don't put a teleporter here to return me to base, do ya? No, I have to navigate all the fucking sewers again. Alright, fine, let's go to a Raleigh smelling like toxic shit and get a flamethrower that'll probably light me up as soon as I try to use it from all the methane gas and start prepping for the assault on the castle. Wait, already? Honest to God, the first time I played this game, I thought I'd already gotten to the end. It seemed long enough because I'd spent an hour dicking around in the sewers. You've exceeded all our expectations. Because of your daring, our troops are on the move. I want you two to join the assault with a specific target. Take out the programmer. Weird how they're asking me to take out an oppressive programmer. I don't suppose he's in the Cygnus building. Yeah, okay, I haven't really had an exposition dump yet, and I'm about two hours into this game. Hit me. The genetic mutations caused by the virus not only warp the psyches of the Order, but cause their bodies to decay. Without procreation, the Order found that biomechanical enhancements were the only way to maintain their strength in numbers. But we believe that their collective consciousness is controlled by one source. The Programmer, creator of the AI which controls the Acolytes. Destroy the Programmer, and we may cripple the Order's troops with a single blow. He says something about the Programmer being able to vaporize targets in one hit, but that's not something we're gonna worry about. You'll see why. Until then, it's time to break out the big guns. We'll need them. Specifically for the Crusaders. They're big mechs with missiles and a flamethrower, but I have a grenade launcher, which is an unwieldy beast of a weapon that fires two grenades at a weird angle in rapid succession. It's almost as dangerous to you as it is to enemies. I've also got a flamethrower, which is also dangerous to you when attempting to kill things at relatively short range with it. But this battle is something special. I've never seen anything like this in the Doom Engine up to this point. You've got friendly NPCs milling around, and the fact that the game is just giving you two new incredibly dangerous weapons to play with, and you're facing some new enemies, and you're searching for the programmer, leading you to several people who are not the programmer. Oh no, I'm not the real programmer. He's hiding. Uh, continue past the guard training area. 
very tough. If you survive, you might be able to talk to him or kill him. This guard training area is a completely optional level. You don't need to go here, but the game rewards you for it. Lots of traps, including instant death pits that are just techno shit, I think. Turrets on high ceilings that are incredibly difficult to hit with this game's already wonky vertical aiming, which is less wonky than the DOS version, but oh, kids. The rewards are sweet. A ton of supplies, and even more importantly, you get a stamina and accuracy upgrade from it. I appreciate Rogue not wasting my time. In this level, next fake programmer is in the audience chamber, heavily guarded. You killed all the guards. Don't hurt me. I told him this was a dumb idea. The real programmer is in the keep. Here, take this key. That was easy. I want to show off what that stamina upgrade does besides the health boost, so... The real programmer, who looks nothing like these dorks, is hidden away in the keep and serves as the first boss of the game. I should make a Carmack joke here, but this programmer is nothing like Carmack because I do not fear or respect him. He looks pretty intimidating with his big pyramid and his lightning, but I have one crucial tool in my arsenal that'll take care of him pretty easily, which is these incendiary grenades. Allow me to demonstrate. <laughs> Good. You're conscious again. When you grab that item the programmer dropped, you let loose some terrible secrets. Oh, listen. The thing about my Uncle Frank was true, the Goldilocksing thing was only half true, and the thing with the emus is 100% bullshit. Do not believe a word of it. Fragments assembled from the programmer's files tell us that the Order is worshipping an intelligent weapon. You mean like a smart gun? They call it the Sigil. Uh-huh, that makes sense, this game being called Quest for the Sigil and all. The piece you touched and recovered is one of five. It wields power drawn from the user's own life force. While you live, you control its power. You can wield it, but at a cost. It will drain you dry. Which is why I very, very rarely use it in regular gameplay, especially on this skill, because I don't need to lose more health. We have reached the limits of my knowledge. Seek out the Oracle and ask it for help. The Oracle is a supposedly sympathetic high priest who operates outside of the Order. Okay, before I head off to do that, I'm gonna go raid the old Rebel HQ. They've set up in the castle we just took, which is a wonderful touch, but not as wonderful as the supplies that are hidden in the old front base. Where to next? Oh, God. All right, boys. Fight like badasses or die like bitches. That thing about the AI controlling the Acolytes being crippled after killing the programmer? Bullshit. They're still around, though their presence is somewhat reduced compared to the robots. And because this game fancies itself an open-world title, to a limited extent because of the time and technology, I take a secret shortcut to the Oracle's chamber. Hey, that's a cool-looking floating cosmic horror you've got in your skylight there. What's up? The wisdom you seek, simple one. Simple? Don't be an asshole. I feel one fragment resonate within you. The second lies at the heart of the Crimson and Obsidian Tower. There you must combat the bishop. The bishop? What, you mean he's like a member of the clergy? The Catholic Church survived- Okay, give me a shot! Don't move! The bishop! Katie, you bitch! Crimson and Obsidian? Why can't he say red and black? If you're playing Veteran Edition, go ahead and pick up this blue talisman here. It'll be more important later. The Bishop is the Order's military leader. He plots their tactics, runs their spies, and is charged with controlling us. We off him and we score twice. This is it, Beavis. We're finally gonna score. No, that's not what she means. We're not gonna score. We're gonna go kill the bishop. First, we have to talk to the Keymaster to get us into the fortress. A lot of people would say this is a thankless and insignificant job, but it's not. In fact... Okay, but remember, I'm the Keymaster. Yeah, okay. His key, and fighting a lot of robots, gets me into the fortress, where I contact an informant who will tell me how to get into the security complex to disable the force field, and gives me a tip on where to find a powerful weapon. We're off to do the force field thing first, because I don't really need the mauler at the moment. You know, I'm doing okay with the incredibly situational weapons I have. 
It's inside the security complex in the administration building where things start to get mazy. As opposed to the sewers which are naturally mazy and I curse the person who designed them. I'm regretting not getting the mauler first a little bit because this is where we start to run into my least favorite enemy in this game, Templars. See, the mauler is like the game's shotgun, but it's energy based, hurts like hell, and these heavily armored assholes carry them. Thankfully they can't use the mauler's secondary fire. And neither can I until I actually go and get it, so now that I've destroyed the computer, it's time Time to go into the completely optional warehouse level, run around like a madman hitting switches for a while and killing an army of order goons, and grab the mauler. This can be a pain in the ass, but to Strife's credit, when it makes you do something difficult in an optional level, it rewards you pretty handsomely for it. In this case, with the Mauler. I understand why Strife's level design is getting more intricate and maze-like as it goes on. It was the style at the time, and it's not as bad as Hexen usually with the number of switches I have to press. Most of the time I have a good idea of what the switches do. On to the Bishop in, I guess, a Vatican-sponsored death mech. We use the same strategy as the programmer. Except, now there's some spectral green and red blob here. There's nothing about this in Tobin's spirit guide. These things can only be killed with the sigil, meaning the strategy is not dying. I mean, like, not dying because the sigil drains your health when you use it. It only takes four hit points from you now, but later? Oh, it's way worse later. See that weird specter that came out of the bishop's body? Where have I seen that before? Well, that's easy. The creepy and obviously evil oracle had one floating above their chambers. So back through the borderlands we go. Your next challenge will test your spirit. The third piece is held by your own leader. He is the same as that which he sends you to kill. If you weren't already blown away by what Strife was doing with the Doom Engine in 1996, get ready, because this is a giant turning point in the game. Right here decides whether you get the good ending or the bad ending. If you go and kill Maisel, you miss out on a ton of the game, but also... Yes, the evil was gone, but our future was uncertain and clouded with doubt. It would take generations to purge the virus from our people, if we survived that long. Whatever the evil wanted, it drained from us the one thing we needed. It left us without hope. And we can't have that. Whatever choice you make, your kind shall perish under the will of the one god. That's definitely something a person I can trust would say. Well... I really don't care for the life-draining sigil attacks. And on my way back from this adventure, I have the strangest feeling, like I'm really walking around an open world, visiting shops to restock, killing time before my next objective. The most primitive form of that thing I sometimes feel in one of the good Fallout games or in Cyberpunk, and I admire the hell out of Strife for being able to accomplish that. There seems no end to the horror we face. We have found out that the Order is not killing our people, it is transforming them into biomechanical soldiers. Wait, did we not know that? I just assumed they were getting strogified this whole time. You know, getting combined, assimilated. Into the Order Commons I go, where I have to behave myself so that the overwhelming Order presence doesn't easily kill me. Strife's ability to introduce a new town, no matter how Doom Engine primitive it is and kinda limited in scale, is really cool. This town has its own shops and vendors and NPCs, like Timothy, who wants me to find a blue chalice in the manufacturing sector as if quests for chalices have gone well for me so far. There's also Richter. Thank Deus you got here. To enter the factory you need a key. No shit. We stole it, but our agent is missing in the web of catacombs under the Order's stronghold. Catacombs, huh? They full of water? Mines, catacombs, sewers. What a first date. Yeah. The catacombs are a Fucking sewer. And that comes with everything from the previous sewer level except the toxic water. It's less confusingly designed than the last sewer, but still confusingly designed. And don't tell me it's not because... I think we're... 
Oh crap, I have no idea where we are. Yeah, and I think it has a higher rat population. I can't kill the rats, I've tried. The catacombs lead to the ruined temple, thankfully, because if the pacing was like the last sewer bit, we'd still be swapping environment suits. This must be the ruins that Richter's agents were searching for. Oh, watch out! Crusaders! Where? Oh, there. You'll be really happy to have the Mauler here. The secondary fire murders stuff real good, and the number of mechs dropping energy ammo will keep it fed for a while. I still have to drag the sigil out because there's a specter here too. My friend, whatever it is we're fighting, it's more than just the order. Off to the mine. Yeah, of course. I've just got one thing to do. In a secret, there's a broken pillar you have to use that'll lower a wall to give you the green talisman. Oh, did you forget about those talismans? Cause Zivi didn't. He sometimes wishes he didn't play Night Dive's version because he has to get the talismans. God damn. The mines are a necessary trip because I have to get an ore that I can shoot to detonate. The problem is that I have to shoot the explosive ore in the commons, which means I have to alert every goddamn enemy in the commons while doing it to get into the factory. Please leave a comment on how it's possible to stealth my way into the factory because I have no idea how to do that. I tried detonating it with a poison arrow, my other stealth weapon, that was a no-go. I tried doing it with shadow armor, also did not work. So I'm stuck with a locked down, fully alerted town that's gonna be on my ass for the rest of the game. Now, if I was playing a non-remastered version of the game, this would be less of a problem. You'll see why in a bit. This is basically the home stretch in terms of Strife's narrative. We've made the major story choices already, and we're dealing with the consequences, which is going to be more confusing sooner than the Order Commons are going to be a problem. Just when I think I've seen it all, they go in human and come out... I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> The Oracle was right. mesel has gone nuts. He just knowingly sent 200 men to their deaths. I want vengeance for the dead and for the living dead. Yeah, Maisel's a bad guy no matter what. And the good path that I'm on only delays having to face him. It turns out that if you don't have a big skylight to reveal a spectral monster, you can stay incognito the whole game. I run back through the Order Commons using some shadow armor and head back to the castle to confront Maisel, who recruited me and allowed me to get three pieces of the sigil, a very dumb Chernabog-like plan to let me become more powerful before killing me. He doesn't even try to hide it anymore. I am the one god. I need his spirit to be free so that I can leave my body and join him in flight! I can help you with the leave your body part. This fucker had a sigil piece the whole time and I had to wade through two sewer levels? Richter reports that the factory we destroyed leads to a lab, and they're getting a sigil power signature from within. Back to the factory and our next step to freedom. So, uh... Am I in charge of the front now? Strife's endgame is pretty difficult if you're not as familiar with the game. I'm on elite skill, which I've never done before. I think I've completed Strife maybe three times before, and I've only gotten the good ending once. The mech presence in these factory levels is pretty extreme, and it brings out the really tough enemies, like the Inquisitors, which aren't technically boss monsters. They're just as hard to deal with as bosses. Now, actually, they're worse, and I've been able to scrap one with a single powered-up Mauler Blast. It's okay. I only have to face two of them within five minutes. With the exception of the Conversion Chapel, these are all twisty metal mazes full of enemies that'll sap all of your resources. I was resorting to killing acolytes with the electric bow. The electric bow! At one point, I take a secret passage out of the factory into the catacombs... <laughs> to scrounge for health and ammo, because I don't have enough gold to buy a damn thing at the shop, and even if I did, I'd have to find a way through the Order Commons gauntlet to get back to one, since all the shops closed the moment I blew up the force field to get into the factory. The factory section is divided into five different maps. Receiving, Manufacturing, Forge, Proving Grounds, and the Lab. Proving Grounds is probably the hardest one, but the lab is real fucking close. I'm pretty sure there are still spiders crawling around Proving Grounds that I didn't bother with. The switch hunting in that level had me running around like a lunatic through a series of teleporters trying to find out what switch opened which door. The lab is mostly difficult because I have to keep my health up to kill the lore master who gives me the final piece of the sigil. I'm guessing he's the nerd who runs TV tropes. Like a hundred acolytes spawn in one side of the map. 
the one with health, naturally, and two Inquisitors. This section of strife is the hardest bit of any of the main Doom Engine games. This comes down to the game's health management system. The game will automatically use health items when you're low, so you can run out really quickly without even knowing. I don't remember if this is a DOS strife feature or a Veteran Edition feature, but I can't find the option to turn it off. Oh no, never mind, here it is buried with the fucking function keys. And then, as I'm about to go into the final stretch of the game, I remember... What about that blue chalice? The blue chalice is not, in fact, a trap. Well, not in the traditional sense, where the order will spawn in forever if you grab it. No, the blue chalice didn't even exist in the original release of the game. It was added as a quest item in Veteran Edition. It's located in the manufacturing part of the factory, but before I get it, I'm still in dire need of health packs and ammo, and I don't have the gold to buy them. And you're thinking I should run around and grab some that I didn't pick up before from other levels, since this is a totally open world. And you're right. I even discover there's a secret exit inside the catacombs that leads to the Bishop's Fortress area from earlier that I used to completely bypass the Order Commons, which is fantastic. I run around everywhere I can, which is like all of the levels in the game, pretty much. I even go looking in the sewers for supplies. <laughs> I have some unfinished business in town. I wanted to check out what was inside the governor's basement earlier. Not very much, so I go upstairs to check out what's inside the governor. I run to the shop and buy the only armor I can afford and prepare to take on this game's greatest challenge yet. With the chalice, I have to return to Timothy in the Order Commons, which will be my last trip to that goddamn place. I'm persona non grata in the commons still, so I have to sneak in. Timothy gives me some information that'll help me get past Master Smithy, who is also a secret agent inside of the Order who lets you into the super-secret new level, Factory Production. Now, this level's supposed to be harder than the rest, but after the struggles I had with low resources throughout the rest of the factory sections, this seems like a cakewalk up until close to the end. Even though it's got a high concentration of Templars, who are the worst, and three Inquisitors. That's fine, we're good, we're jamming, we're kicking ass. The prize hidden at the end of this level is the red talisman to go with my green and blue talismans, and that grants super strength, meaning your punch knife is now extra powerful. How powerful? Well, the game spawns in a bunch of Templars, which you can now one-hit with your punch. It's permanent berserk. Would be awesome earlier in the game, but hey, I have it now. Not that you'll see much of it since we're only one short journey away from the very end of the game. Past the lab is the alien ship, your typical penultimate level gauntlet of high tier enemies that I basically sprint through to preserve my little health and resources. Because I'm kind of an idiot sometimes. See, I walk into the final boss room hoping and praying that I have enough health to survive, because the strategy isn't about movement or weapon swapping. The final boss is an even bigger, nastier spectral blob called the One God, and it can only be defeated with the sigil, which by this point drains 20 HP every time I fire it. That's the main challenge in this fight. You need enough health to use the sigil enough times to kill the one god. And if you don't... The sentient virus hit us like a tidal wave, driving us all mad. We heard the siren's song of death, and we danced. This evil drained us of all human life, and scornful of procreation, recycled our families. Then one day, the evil left. There was simply nothing for it to feed on. We were... extinct. Yeah, that's the worst ending you can get, which happens when you die during the final fight. I was curious exactly how many blasts from the sigil I needed, so I ended up turning on god mode and doing some testing. It turns out I needed at least 10, meaning I needed to have over 200 points of health available in order to beat the boss, and I had walked in with none, like an idiot. Because if you go two rooms back to this area with the big bridge towards the boss arena, there's a secret with a bunch of medium health pickups, but more importantly, there's a surgical kit, which will restore you to full health. Full health, after all the stamina upgrades I've gotten, is 200 HP. A 
Attention, all troops of the front. He's done it. It's over. Blackbird's soldier has killed the evil. The order is no more. Blackbird, do you read me? I knew you would win, my gallant hero. All fighting has stopped. Your victory will allow us to create a vaccine to purge the virus from our bodies. You have saved our planet and set us free. Now, I'd like to thank you, personally. Oh, and by the way, the name's Shana. Oh my god, we did it! We're gonna score! Defeating the one god means we get to score with a hot chick with huge knockers! We're gonna do, do it! it. <laughs> yeah, we're finally gonna score! Yes! Oh my god, yes! We saved the world from an alien threat, and the good ending is that we get some strange from this chick who loves it when we murder people. This is awesome. This is everything I could have asked for from a game ending. When I was 14. Yeah. <laughs>